Did all titans come from a giant worm? Let's talk about it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I bet you've been seeing this creature a lot this past week. So today, I decided it's time to explain that creature, both in real life and in our story. In addition, I'm going to introduce you to one of the most amazing creatures you have ever seen. A creature so special that you can almost call it supernatural. Keep in mind that there will be minor spoilers about this creature in our story, but no spoilers for future events. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to get updates about new videos coming to my channel. And now, let's talk about prehistoric worms. In the latest episode of Attack on Titan, we got a glimpse of the creature that started Titan life in our story. People who follow my channel learned two years ago about this mysterious creature in these two videos I made. The Hallucigenia Sparsa. This amazing organism got its name because of its trip-inducing appearance. Back then, it reminded the scientists of something that you might see while hallucinating or dreaming. The Hallucigenia lived around 540 million years ago, dating back to the Cambrian Explosion. The Cambrian Explosion was most known for the appearance of many new life forms. According to scientists, it is what started the evolution of complex life forms on the face of the planet. This is one of the reasons Isayama chose this creature, because it was around a certain time when life as we know it just started. Isayama could have chosen different organisms that lived at that period, because there are ones much more well known, but I like to believe he wanted to make it difficult for people to find it at first. Unfortunately for him, he didn't know insane people like myself will not sleep until they will find what that creature is. And I can tell you from my own experience, it took me a lot of time finding it back then, especially because it was not as well known as other specimens of its time period. The first Hallucigenia fossil was only discovered around 100 years ago, and back then it baffled everyone. The obvious reason was because of its unique look, but the other reason was that it appeared to have no head. From that, it even got its name, the Headless Worm. Much later, scientists will discover its head, and later, they will discover that they got it all wrong, because the actual head of this creature was on its other side, and when examined closely, the fossil even featured something that looked like eyes and a little smile. Scientists were so confused by it, they also believed that the creature's tentacles were its legs and that it walked on its back. Only later they understood that it walked upside down. Another fun fact, scientists believed that this creature couldn't walk backwards, so it is basically always moving forward, which is pretty symbolic. Isayama wanted to present something from our world, going away from aliens and other life forms, maybe to keep the story as lifelike as possible. But how did the Hallucigenia actually start Titan life in our story? Well, this is the fantasy side of Attack on Titan, because even though the story is trying to present the process of evolution, Titans are still fantasy creatures, so we can't actually explain them with science. But Isayama did introduce some sort of explanation for why evolution took such a wild turn, creating the Titans. I believe it wasn't so clear in the manga, so let's clarify everything about the organism in the compound of our story. If you read the manga, you already know that this creature's name is Life. Well, it's little more evolved version actually, so let's explain. Later in our story, we will discover that this creature, that took many forms across the years, was actually what started all life on the planet. So in our story, life started from, well, life. According to our story, Millions of years ago, there were a lot of creatures around, as we can see from this panel. Our creature called Life, or the Hallucigenia, was one of those creatures, and across the years, it was the one that survived. Along the way, Life took different forms in order to multiply and survive. It adapted to new environments and eventually, it led to humans. All this, of course, took place long before Ymir and the time of the Titans. At those ancient times, there were a lot of this same creature, and all of them evolved and adapted the same way across time. But sometime along the way, one of those ancient organisms got trapped under a giant tree and somehow got preserved. It was away from the outside, so while other creatures like it evolved into complex life forms, that specific one had its own evolution process. Unlike the outside, the environment under the tree remained the same, so this specific organism also took different forms. 
While other forms of the same organism eventually turned into humans, this one had a completely different evolution process. This one single creature basically skipped the evolution process that went on the face of the planet. Years later, Ymir got to that tree and dropped into the water. Now, we need to remember that Ymir is a slightly different and more evolved version of that ancient organism life. So when she came in contact with that creature inside the tree, she basically came in contact with an ancient version of the organism she originated from, but one that had a different evolution process, and was basically one of a kind, a primal version of it, the same organism that took a slightly different path in evolution. And I know, we will never look at it as we look at our characters, but if you think about it, it was also completely alone, in the dark beneath the tree, unable to escape. Emir's arrival 2000 years ago is what gave it its freedom, and overnight it became the dominant life form on the planet. So in a way, that organism and Emir saved each other on that day, and that mix between ancient organism and a more evolved version, which is Emir, is what created this abnormality we call the Titans. A link between an ancient and a modern version of the same life form, skipping years of evolution, creating something entirely new. So yes, this is still not science, but I hope I could clarify some things in the story if you were still confused about it. Here is something fun to think about. In our universe, humans were created in the process of evolution, evolving from less complex life forms and up to humans today. At some point in time, as life took different evolutional paths, humans were created alongside other species of animals we know today. But at some point in time, before all those species got separated, they all came from more simple life forms, meaning some of them shared the same origin. The same thing I believe is what Attack on Titan is trying to describe. The organism life is a simpler life form that in time took different shapes to adapt until it reached humans today. That is an evolution process in simple words, and that means that it is safe to assume that life was also the base evolution for most animals in the world of Attack on Titan. And that will finally explain the opening song to Season 2, with all the animals in the background. They all had some glow inside of them to indicate some sort of connection. It was something much deeper than the connection between Eldians, it was the connection to all living things, and that could be explained if the Alucigenia was indeed the source of all organic life in Attack on Titan. Just something fun to think about. And now, as I promised, I wanted to show you one of the most amazing organisms that ever lived on the face of this planet, and one that I am sure Isayama had in mind because it can literally survive through time and the vacuum of space. The mighty and incredible Water bear! Look at it! It's so cute! Meet the tardigrade, also known as water bears because, well, they look like little miniature bears swimming in the water. So what is so special about this adorable thing? Well, everything actually. The tardigrade is a half millimeter microscopic eight-legged creature that can literally survive an apocalypse. Tardigrades belong to an elite category of animals that can survive environments that most other can't. For example, tardigrades can live up to 30 years without food or water. They can live in temperatures as low as absolute zero and above boiling. It can sustain the pressure six times of the deepest ocean. And like I mentioned, it can also live in the vacuum of space. But if you remember, I also mentioned it survived through time. And that is because this creature's origin is the same as the Alucigenia, around the same time period, and up until today. Because this little creature is so durable, it survived for all those years. And you can find it also today, with more than 1,300 species that can be found across the planet. And that is one tough organism. And the only reason Isayama didn't use it is because it is much more famous than the Alucigenia. Even South Park did an episode on this amazing creature, in an episode when they tried to train the water bears to replace the fans of the NFL League. Well, it's South Park, so it must be crazy, right? And what do you think? Will the water bear be a better creature to use in Attack on Titan? Or do you prefer the Alucigenia? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you have a water bear in your house, please know that I am looking to adopt one. And seriously, if I can find one in some lab here, I would absolutely do a video about it. 
But this is all for this video, my titan loving friends, and thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and to give this video a little like if you enjoyed. I will see you all real soon. And until then, don't forget to dedicate your hearts to humanity, inside and outside the walls.